we're going to move on to our next unit now, which is about finding perspective. Uh, so to get started, I want you guys to uh, write down somewhere an answer to the, this question. What does this quote mean? Where you're sitting can have a big impact on how you interpret things. I'm going to repeat it. Where you're sitting can have a big impact on how you interpret things. I want you to pause me, and then when you're ready to move on, go ahead and play. All right, we're gonna watch a video, and I want you to be thinking about what this video has to do with that quote, where you're sitting can have a big impact on how you interpret things. Can I minimize myself? Maybe. Okay. I think we all see the world in the same way. When it comes to perspective, where you're sitting can have a big impact on how you interpret things. Let me show you what I mean with a little bit of magic. Thanks for lunch, guys. That was amazing. Thanks so much. Hey, um, let me show you this new trick I've been uh, working on. Uh, it's kind of like to test your perspective a little bit. Um, let's use this quarter here. Check it out. So it's actually called the quarter through the table. So I'm going to make this quarter pass right through the wooden table. I have a bottle of hot sauce here. So uh, this trick is typically done with a salt shaker, but I'll use this because we have uh, this around. Check this out. So if I cover the hot sauce like this with the napkin. Watch the quarter, it's going to go right through. Here we go. Oops. Sorry, it has to be you know, from the tail side up. Right. Here we go. Oh, hold on, wait. No, sorry, I meant, <laughs> sorry, I meant, I meant <laughs> through the tape. Sorry, my mistake. <laughs> my mistake. <laughs> Would you like to know? I can teach you guys if you want. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm covering the hot sauce like this, and you make sure that nobody can see uh, the bottle underneath. And what you're going to do is you're going to form it. You're going to form the napkin over the bottle. So you're going to lie. You're going to say the core is going to go through the table, but only it's the hot sauce the whole time. We don't tell them this. So you watch the core, you go like this. You're going to fail once. When you fail, you say, oh, sorry, it has to be tail side up or head side up, whatever. And you do it again. Ah, and when it doesn't work on this time, as I'm going to reach for the quarter, look what I'm doing here. I'm dropping the bottle on my lap, but you can't tell because this retains the shape, right? So you say, oh, I wonder why it's not working. You go back up, and then they obviously think it's a no reason to think it's not. You go, you show, sorry, I didn't mean the quarter, I meant the hot sauce. And then when you go get the hot sauce, you have to go one fluid motion, go in the middle, and then pretend like you're... <laughs> pulling it out, and then when you pull out the hot sauce, they're going to go... <laughs> They'll call me Eric. <laughs> so that's a trick you guys can do at home. Think you can do it? Yeah. Pretty easy, man. No, it's yeah. easy. There's no heat. There's no heat on the ball. It's all in the quarter. That's what makes the trick. It's all a matter of perspective. So it's not always about what you see, but how you look at something that can help you figure out what's going on. The next time you're puzzled, just try a different angle. It down. All right, so I want you to go back to your warm up now, and I want you to add Has your thinking changed after watching that video? If not, how did that video confirm what you were already thinking? Pause me, and when you're ready to keep going, click play. All right, so uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to take some time to watch a video. Um, of a story written by um, a man named Plato. Um, it's actually uh, an allegory. It's called the Allegory of the Cave. Um, and an allegory is just a story that has like a hidden meaning, like a moral or a lesson. Remember the theme? So it's basically all stories, right? But it's a hidden message. Okay, so it's going to be something that's a little bit more metaphorical. So Plato was um, a philosopher uh, a long time ago. And he wrote this story called The Allegory of the Cave. And it is really about perspective. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna watch it and periodically I'm going to stop it and ask questions that I want you guys to uh, write answers to, okay? All right. So I'm gonna get started. Thank you. 
What is reality? Knowledge. The meaning of life. Big topics you might tackle figuratively. Explaining existence as a journey down a road or across an ocean. A climb. A war. A book. A thread. A game. A window of opportunity. Or an all too short lived flicker of flame. 2,400 years ago, one of history's most famous thinkers said life is like being chained up in a cave, forced to watch shadows flitting across a stone wall. Pretty cheery, right? That's actually what Plato suggested in his Allegory of the Cave, found in Book 7 of The Republic, in which the Greek philosopher envisioned the ideal society by examining concepts like justice, truth, and beauty. In the allegory, a group of prisoners have been confined in a cavern since birth, with no knowledge of the outside world. They are chained facing a wall, unable to turn their heads, while a fire behind them gives off a faint light. Occasionally, people pass by the fire, carrying figures of animals and other objects that cast shadows on the wall. The prisoners name and classify these illusions, believing they're perceiving actual entities. Suddenly, one prisoner is freed and brought outside for the first time. The sunlight hurts his eyes, and he finds the new environment disorienting. When told that the things around him are real, while the shadows were mere reflections, he cannot believe it. All right, so my first question that I want you to take some time to answer is, why do you think that the prisoner can't believe that the shadows were only reflections? Pause me, and when you're ready to move on, click play. The shadows appeared much clearer to him, but gradually his eyes adjust until he can look at reflections in the water, at objects directly, and finally at the sun, whose light is the ultimate source of everything he has seen. All right, why does the sun change the prisoner's belief? When you're ready to move on, press play. Oh, well, I guess press pause and then press play. That makes sense. The prisoner returns to the cave to share his discovery, but he is no longer used to the darkness and has a hard time seeing the shadows on the wall. The other prisoners think the journey has made him stupid. And Why do the other prisoners think the journey has made this prisoner stupid? Press pause so you can answer this question, and when you're ready to go, press play. Climb and violently resist any attempts to free them. Plato introduces this passage as an analogy of what it's like to be a philosopher trying to educate the public. All right, so we're going to stop there, and I want my your last question uh, to answer with this story right now is just what, um, why is the returning prisoner's perspective different than the ones who never left? Okay, so go ahead and press pause um, until you are ready to uh, move on to our like little mini lesson today um, because we are going to continue to do a mini lesson today um, about theme so make sure that you have um, finished the uh, the interactive read aloud before you move on to our mini lesson. So don't click play until you're ready. So what we're going to do is we are going to um, take some time to look at the theme of this story. So the theme is really important, um, and it is the message of the story, the lesson, the moral. Remember, that's what an allegory has, is a lesson or moral. And I told you that it was going to be about perspective. So I want you to be thinking about um, what this story really tells us about perspective. Um, and while we do that, I'm going to share my screen. So what we're going to do is we are going to, and you can just write this, but we're going to look at events from the text and explanation of how they show the theme. So, um, 
I'm going to say that the theme of this text or the lesson or the moral that Plato wanted us to get was that everything in a person's life is impacted by their perspective. And in parentheses, I'm going to put experiences, viewpoints, etc. So their experiences and their viewpoint on life really impact everything in their life. So we're going to look and we're going to think about any events in the text that really have to do with perspective. Um, and the first one um, that I can think about is how the prisoners um, didn't really, I spelled prisoners wrong, the prisoners didn't realize that the shadows in the cave were actually being cast by something else, like by other objects. And what does that have to do with how uh, everything in a person's life is impacted by their perspective is um, because the prisoners were only facing one direction, um, they were unaware of the light behind them and the objects casting shadows. Um, so if they had been further back, been turned around, they would have understood things very differently. So for them, literally, the way they were facing changed their understanding of life entirely. And so the next big perspective thing that I think happen is when uh, the freed prisoner goes outside and doesn't trust that the Objects he sees are real. And the shadows are a reflection. So again, this goes right back to his um, his experiences. He's only seen shadows until this point, so he only trusts them. If we had only seen shadows, we would only trust shadows. Um, so what he knew first and longest is what is real in his mind. Um, right, then the next thing is when the prisoner comes back, so the other prisoners think he's, think the freed prisoner has become stupid. Um, so I want you to think, so he, he goes out and they think that the journey has made him stupid. Um, what I want you to do is I want you to take some time to answer how that has to do with theme, okay? How does that prove that everything in a person's life is impacted by their perspective? Go ahead and pause me, and then I'm gonna share my answer when we come back. Okay, so um, this has to do with perspective because the freed prisoner has a new perspective based on going outside. While the other prisoners still don't. They think his new perspective is wrong because it doesn't go with what they know. Okay? So the last one that I want us to look at, and you guys are going to do this on your own and turn it in, is um, at the end when the other prisoners um, resist any attempt to be freed. So they try actively to not be freed. So I want you to talk about what that has to do with perspective and how everything in a person's life is impacted by their perspective, their experiences, their viewpoint. Um, so it's really important as readers, especially when we're thinking about something like an allegory, for us to really consider what the um, the theme or the moral is of the story and really how the author has developed that theme throughout the story. Um, once you finish that work, make sure you turn it in and have a really good rest of your day.